This video will teach you some techniques and uh, safety factors when working with a drill press. A drill press is a very uh, useful piece of equipment in the shop. It functions much the way other drills do. A drill press is really just a stationary drill. It works much the same way that a handheld drill will work, but with a few differences in it and advantages, as you'll see. One disadvantage is it's simply not as, as portable as a handheld drill, but beyond that, it's, it's pretty useful. Drill presses come in different sizes. This is our larger drill press in the, in the shop. Uh, it has a big heavy duty motor. It can drive larger bits, can work with bigger pieces of wood and so forth. It's, uh, it's the, probably the main one you'll be using when you're using a drill press in, uh, in this class. We also have this bench top drill press. It functions much the same way that the larger one does. It's just more compact in size, shorter, less expensive and also a little less powerful, but it functions much the same way as the other and all the same features, all the same way that you would, you would operate it. So whatever I show you on one, it's pretty much gonna to apply to the other one as well. So to point out here, some of the basic parts and features of a drill press. A drill press has a motor, in this case, a, a pretty nice uh, beefy powerful one. That motor for most drill presses drives a set of pulleys up here. As you can see, there's pulleys with belts that run between the, the pulleys and the uh, pulleys connect to the, to the shaft or the arbor that, uh, that, that turns the bit. The bit is held in a piece called the chuck. You'll hear this called the drill chuck or drill press chuck. Uh, that's, that's the part that actually holds the drill bit. Then there's the drill bit itself, of course, that's changeable. Drill press has a table. The table can be raised up and down, as I'll show you in a moment, uh, or even moved completely out of the way if, if, if necessary. The drill press functions by, by turning this uh, wheel of handles here. And as you turn the handle, you'll notice that the bit is lowered down into your piece of work. So that's, that's essentially how the drill press will work is you'll put the bit that you want into the drill press, fasten it down securely, you'll start the motor and then you'll lower the bit into your piece of work as deep as you as you need to go. The uh, wheel is has spring on it so that when you let go it will retract automatically by itself. When you're getting ready to drill some pieces of wood on the drill press there's a few things to keep in mind. Um, first of all the table is the control surface for the drill press so whatever you're drilling you want it to be sitting flat on the table here. The bits are designed, as you know from the safety video, the bits are designed for drilling in wood, generally speaking. And so we wanna make sure they don't come in contact with any metal. So you wanna make sure there's no metal in the piece of wood that you're drilling, but also you don't want the drill to, uh, bit to come down and contact this cast iron uh, metal table here. So usually when you're using the drill press, you're gonna find some piece of wood, a scrap of some sort, and you're gonna put it down here on the table to be underneath the piece that you're actually trying to drill. So let's say I'm trying to put holes in this piece. I put this piece down in order to protect the drill bit from hitting the drill uh, press table itself. The second reason that you would, you want a backing piece of wood here is that you'll get cleaner uh, holes when you do your drilling. I, uh, hopefully this will show up on the camera. I just drilled a couple of holes in this piece of wood here, just using a hand drill, and I just pushed them through the wood. You'll notice this is on the bottom of the piece of wood where the drill bit came out. And you'll notice this, this tear out, these rough edges that were left as the, drill, uh, as the drill bit passed through the wood. And as it started to break through the other side, the back side, it, it broke out these chunks of wood on the back side. That's usually a problem. You really don't want that. You don't want that, that, that tear out or splitting out on the, back of the, on the back of the wood. It just makes for, uh, for a messy looking hole. The front side is nice and clean where the bit went in, but the back side is all ragged where this tear out happened. Using a backing board will prevent that. And I'll show you that as we, as we drill, uh, drill a hole with it. When you're getting ready to drill some holes with a drill press, the first thing you're going to do is select the bit that you need for the size hole that you're creating. I have a separate video where I'll talk to you about different kinds of drill bits and what you would use them for. But for now, I'm just picking up a typical half inch diameter bit here that we're going to use. 
The bit is held into the chuck here in a way that I want to show you how that happens. The chuck has three fingers in it that come down and grip tightly around the drill bit to hold it in place. That's the whole design of the chuck here. And the way it does that is that this, this uh, ring of the chuck here turns around the bottom part and loosens and tightens those fingers. It moves them up and down and in and out in order to grab the drill bit. So to put the drill bit in, you want the drill bit to be in at least half to three quarters of an inch. You don't have to bury it all the way really deep, but you want at least half an inch or you know, maybe the width of your finger or a little more into the, into the chuck so that it grips it completely. So I put it up between the fingers and then I'm tightening this chuck down by hand until it's nice and snug. That's not tight enough though. What we now need to do is we need to tighten it using the chuck key. The chuck key on this drill press is held right up here in this little, this little clip. That's where you can find it and that's always where you should return it when you're done so that we know where it is. Chuck keys are unique to each brand and perhaps model of drill press. And so if it gets lost, it can be a royal pain to try to find a replacement. Better than not lose it in the first place. So when you're done with it, just put it right back in that clip and that way everybody knows where it is. But when you're going to, to tighten up the chuck with the drill bit in it, you first tighten the chuck by hand, but then you put the chuck key into these holes here. There's several around, around the uh, perimeter of this, of this um, of the chuck here. You put that in and you press it in and the teeth in the chuck key will engage in the teeth on the chuck and you're going to tighten that. Doesn't have to be Superman strong, uh, just snug enough that, um, you know, a good, a good, good snug pull on that, maybe 50 or 60 percent of your strength should be sufficient to hold it in place. When you're done, put the chuck key right back there. Now we've got our drill bit in there, securely held and ready to drill. The next thing we need to do is we need to set the height of the table so that our drill press will drill properly. As we lower this down, you'll notice that there's a point at which it won't go down any further. Drill presses have a maximum depth capacity. On this larger drill press, it's about three inches maximum. You can really only go as deep as about three inches, which is actually deeper than our bit is long here, but, but a maximum of three inches. On our small drill press, it's about two inches. You can only drill about two inches deep. So we may have to raise or lower the table to get the piece of wood in the proper place. With this piece of wood, pretty thin, you'll notice it won't even reach down to the piece of wood. So to raise the table, there's a locking lever on the back here. You just loosen the locking lever, half a turn or a full turn, and then this crank allows you to crank the table up and down to the proper height. So what I'm doing is I'm cranking it up so that the bit is, you know, within half an inch or so of the, uh, of the piece of wood. That dimension is not critical, but you want it close enough that you don't have to turn this wheel a long distance in order to come in contact with the wood. Because the further you have to move down to get to the wood, the, the less you have left to drill a hole. And if you're drilling a, drilling a deep hole, that could be an issue. So anyway, we have our table raised up, so we're roughly half an inch or an inch away from our piece of wood. Now we'll go and we'll lock the table in place. So go back to this locking lever and screw that down again, snug. Again, it doesn't have to be super, super tight, but just snug so that this isn't gonna move around on you. The next thing that it's a good idea to do is to fasten everything down. You could just fasten down your, uh, your backing board uh, and I'm doing that with a couple of the, uh, the blue clamps that we have in the shop. I'm just clamping the, the, uh, the backing board down to, the, down to the, uh, the cast iron table. I'm putting two clamps on one end each side out of the way of where my, my wood is. So that's usually sufficient, but it's also sometimes a good idea, especially if you're drilling a big hole with a large diameter bit, that you wanna clamp down your workpiece also because the bit can, can create torque on the, on the piece of wood and cause it to turn, and even to the extent of pulling it right out of your hands with the larger bit. With the smaller bit, that's less of an issue, but frankly, it's still, still a good idea to, to, to clamp it down if you're, if you're doing a lot of, of, uh, lot of drilling. So anyway, we've got our backing board clamped down. We've got this board. It's sufficient that we think we can hold it pretty, pretty good here to drill this hole. Uh, we sat at the right of our table, we got the right bit, it's tightened in place, we're ready to go.
The main safety risk with a drill press is two things. One, it's pretty obvious, and that is you want to keep your hand out of the way of the bit. You don't, you don't want to be drilling through your hand. Believe me, I've done that. It's not fun. Beyond that, as I said, if you're drilling a large hole, you want to make sure things are clamped down because you can have an issue with your piece of wood moving around. The other thing is, this is where it's really important not to have anything that's hanging down from your clothing, a loose sleeve or a scarf or long hair, anything like that. It can get caught surprisingly easy, easily by the chuck here and around the spindle and, and pull you right in with uh, quite a bit of force. This, uh, this drill press, I think, has about a one and a half horsepower motor. That's a lot of force. That will, that will pull your hair out. It will pull you in and give you nasty cuts or, or abrasions and so forth. Better yet, just make sure nothing gets caught, is, is on you that could get caught in the bit as you're doing the drilling. Just, you know, pull things back, pull them out of the way, take off anything that's hanging down, whatever you need to do to make sure there's nothing that's going to get caught in the drill press as you use it. Beyond that, the start and stop switches are right here on the front of the, of the machine, clearly labeled. So when we're ready to drill, we're just going to start the machine and we're going to just lower the bit nice and gently. We don't force it through. We only go as fast as the bit wants to cut. And we're going to go until we're all the way through our piece and a little bit into the backing board. You actually want to drill into the backing board uh, so that you're sure your hole is complete. And the reason for that is the backing board allows us to drill a nice clean hole here. So you can see the back side, the front side of the hole where I started to drill is nice and clean. And the back side of the hole is also nice and clean because it was resting against the backing board. Compare that to, to this hole that I drilled freehand without a backing board. And you can see how rough and torn out it is around the hole compared to Com compared to the hole that I drilled um, on the drill press with the backing board. So the backing board is a really good idea to get nice clean uh, holes on both sides of, of your hole. The last thing I'll mention about using a drill press is that there's a technique that can help make it easier for you to get good, accurate drilled holes if you're drilling a series of holes. Maybe you're drilling a line of holes for a project you're making, uh, maybe to put pegs in or for whatever, where you might want a series of holes that are all the same distance from the edge of the board. So what I've added here to the drill press is a fence. And, and here the drill press doesn't have its own fence, but I've just simply taken another scrap of wood with a straight edge on it. And I've clamped it down here to the table to act like a fence. Now, as I'm going through and drilling my series of holes, I can just move the board along the fence and that will make sure that the spacing between the edge of the board and the bit is the same for all of my holes. I still have to get at the right location this way, so I would mark where my holes go. But in this way, with the fence, I've taken care of one of the two directions of possible movement already, and that's going to improve my accuracy. So here, if I'm drilling a set of holes, here I go. My bit's in place, my fence is set up, the table's the right height, there's nobody around me to, um, to be a problem or in the way. And so here we go. I'm using the benchtop drill press here to illustrate just a few more things about drill presses. One I'll mention about the pulleys, see this has the same setup as the larger one. There's a motor here, a set of pulleys with a belt that drives the spindle, uh, the shaft for the uh, bit. Here's the chuck that we use to hold the bit and our bit in here. And the bit is lowered using this uh, levered wheel, uh, the same as the large one. I'll just mention the pulleys, the reason for all these different pulleys, you can move the belt up and down between these different sets of pulleys. And the reason for that is to vary the speed of the drill bit, the, the number of ro rotations per minute or RPMs. The reason we wanna do that is that when we're using a larger bit, we wanna slow down the speed of the spindle, the RPMs, because the edge of that larger bit is moving much faster. Uh, and it also uh, puts a lot more strain on the 
on the drill press. And so we slow the drill press down in order to get a consistent speed around the edge of the larger drill bit and also to reduce the strain on the, on the motor and the other components of the drill press. Uh, you also want to slow down for certain materials. If you're drilling metal with the drill press, with, you can do with the right bit. Then you want to slow it down. Metals generally need to be drilled at a slower speed than, than wood does. Wood, we usually want the highest speed possible. Metal typically, whether it's brass or steel or other metals, typically you use a significantly lower drill, uh, drill bit speed, rotations per minute. And that's what these different pulleys are for, is to vary the speed. There's a little chart in the lid there that tells us which pulleys give us a certain number of RPMs. So this has a chuck key, just like our large drill press, and it's in a little clip there, just like the large one. Again, once you've tightened down your drill, your uh, bit in the chuck, that's nice and snug. It goes right back there in the clip. Don't set it down anywhere. That's how it gets lost. Okay, so now we're ready to do uh, drilling. Typically what you will have is you will have marks on your board that show where you want your hole to go. You will have measured a distance from one end and a distance from the other end of the board. So you have a certain point that you want that hole to go, the center of that hole to go. That's what this mark is for. So the way you'll line that up is that you go into the drill press. With the drill press off, you'll lower the bit down so that you can see here where the tip of the bit is contacting the board. And I can see now as I move this around and line it up, that I'm lining it up so that the tip, the very point of that bit is right where my mark is, right in the center of my two lines. This is how I get a nice precise location for my hole. Once I've located that, I'm gonna hold my board down or clamp it down. And now, as long as I don't move the board, now my bit will drill in exactly that spot. On the small drill press, the off-on switch is this lever here. Just flip that up and we're ready to go. There we go. Nice clean hole with the backer board clamped down. We've got a nice clean entrance to the hole, nice clean exit. That's what we want. Now, last thing is um, you're gonna generate chips uh, when, you, when, you, when you drill. That's something you'll want to clean up. Any scraps and things you'll want to throw away. That's pretty much it for drill presses. One last thing I wanted to mention. The other part about cleaning up when you're using a drill press is, you know, you got a bit out, you put it in here, you used it. Don't just walk away. If you're the one that put the bit in uh, for your project, what you want to do when you're all done with your drilling is take your drill bit out and put it back in the storage cabinet where it, where it belongs. Pull it out, put our chuck key back, and this goes back in the cabinet. 